Greetings, I'm DK Rostow. Welcome back to the TTT News. Many persons speak about inclusion, but we are going in-depth on some gentlemen living it right now with the CERT Volunteer Training Program. We are joined by Crisis Management Coordinator, Trinidad and Tobago Red Cross Society, Stefan Kishore, Senior Disaster Management Coordinator, Ministry of Rural Development and Local Government, Jerry David, and Vice President of TNT Association for the Hearing Impaired, Stephen Dukran. Welcome, gentlemen. Now, Mr. Kishore, I want to start with you, please, in terms of what is CERT and who are the stakeholders involved? Hi, good day, uh, DK. CERT stands for Community Emergency Response Team. It is a flagship program jointly facilitated by the Ministry of Rural Development and Local Government and the Trinidad and Tobago Red Cross Society. And it's one of our main programs where we are able to build community resilience. Now, community resilience has a number of steps uh, that you have to take in order to achieve resilience. And CERT is one of them, along with the work that we do after in terms of building community disaster plans and integrating the response team with the disaster management units in the 14 municipalities across Trinidad. The stakeholders for CERT are community members who are committed who, to be trained and who are committed to responding in times of crisis to assist their communities in the event that a major disaster happens and the community is cut off and these communities need that assistance in order to survive for the first three days after a disaster. Community emergency response teams are there to do assessments, communicate information to the disaster management units and be able to establish that command in the community until professional responders arrive. And Mr. Thank you so much for that, Mr. Kishore. And Mr. David, I want to bring you in and ask specifically about the reason of having a program like this, because this one feels a little different. It's a little more inclusive. And tell me about the ministry's uh, desire or saying this is something that we need to be a part of. OK, Andy here. Trinidad and Tobago will always be vulnerable to many hazards. Like my countries in the, in, in, in the Caribbean, and uh, particular hydrometeorological events and, of course, seismic events. Uh, Stefan alluded to the fact that if there is a major disaster, or there is a, perhaps it, it, it will be what you may call a serious hazard impact, then the community themselves must be able to recognize respond and recover. And we're not only speaking about uh, the communities uh, that we deem to be, uh, well, let me put it this way, there are communities that are more vulnerable than us. Uh, today, um, we are highlighting uh, the, the death. That's a community that will be impacted also. So that they must be able to recognize, respond, recover from any hazard that impacts. Uh, so what we do is that we would train them in a special way, special skills. Of course, we teach them disaster preparedness. We would teach them search and rescue techniques. We would teach them fire suppression. Uh, the Red Cross, who are our partners in this, they are responsible for doing the disaster medical operation segment of this. And then we do uh, what we call psychological first aid. So you see, we are preparing all communities, uh, not only uh, communities that, uh, and, and many communities that have developed in vulnerable areas. And, and, and you know that there are many communities that have been built in vulnerable areas in Trinidad. So we have to prepare them. Uh, the, the, the deaf community is, as I indicated, is one of the communities uh, uh, we have to work with also. I hope that answers part here. Yeah. Answers your question. It does, and we and we will continue expanding on, on that answer as we continue in the conversation. But let me bring in Mr. Dukran. And Mr. Dukran, give me an idea of what is the role of We Care Deaf Support Network? Thank you.
all right so we here that support not good we have the with red cross also the ministry because in the past hearing persons the hearing community would have said that that persons cannot be involved in the system because we, they don't know sign language or we or we can't communicate or we are deaf but now we care we are willing to be trained and also train different um deaf persons in different areas in the community but as you know what part of that is south part whatever and mr jerry david he will delegate the responsibilities because when disasters happen and perhaps a deaf person is there and there is no no person to communicate if deaf persons are involved in cert program then we can see how that persons can assist in bringing that bridge and allowing communication to be accessed all right thank you very much and i actually wanted the first answer from mr dukran to 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 play out before we actually able to just uh I guess officially say what you would have just seen in the sense that Mr. Dukran is, is hearing impaired and he has an interpreter with him. She is off camera, but we thank you very much for your presence. And also I want to ask you, please, Mr. Kisho, how did an initiative like this come about? Because yes, Mr. David is saying, okay, well, we're looking at vulnerability, we're looking at addressing that, we're looking at resilience, but in terms of saying, okay, well, this is the community that we're going to try to build capacity with at this point in time. How did that happen? So it's our mission between the Red Cross and the Ministry of Rural Development and Local Government to ensure all communities are prepared. The deaf community, as Mr. David highlighted, is one community that may be more adversely impacted if there is a major disaster. So because the Red Cross mandate is to serve vulnerable people, we looked at establishing that partnership uh, with the deaf community. So through We Care and by broader association, the Association of the Hearing Impaired, we have that long-standing relationship where we work together to build resilience and ensure that they are prepared. So this is not the first time we've engaged the deaf. Uh, we've been having these dialogues for some time. We've been doing some training um, beforehand. Um, in years gone by, not too far along, two years ago, we would have had the association actually come to our SIR trainings for the hearing and teach basic sign language to ensure that the SIR train persons can actually communicate essential messages to the deaf. Now that we saw the need to actually train deaf persons so that they now as a community can expand and actually be a very good resource for us because we understand from a broad perspective what are the needs of communities, vulnerable communities. But it's only when you get persons who actually get the training, get to really understand the concepts of disaster management and disaster response, that you really get to identify what the gaps are and it will help us. So this initial training was done with 12 deaf persons. And what it allowed us to do, uh, the feedback we got was excellent that you know we uh, were able to keep it very hands-on. We, they were felt very engaged. They felt very empowered um, based on the skills that we taught and they felt prepared. Now that was the first step. We are now taking the lessons learned from that, all the comments that they were able to provide and improve on the training. Because based on the information we have, there may be about over 6,000 plus you know, deaf persons in Trinidad and Tobago, and we need to reach more. The mission that we have between the ministry and Red Cross is to have at least 10% of the population of Trinidad and Tobago trained by 2025. But because of COVID-19, we weren't able to make that big push um, to the numbers that we would want to see. So we're extending that to 2030. So that's 10% of the population that's trained. And that's really to make sure in the event of any major disaster, at least every household may have somebody that has skills, that has the understanding, that knows how to be prepared and are prepared. So that household will be less likely to count on the state or the support organizations for that immediate assistance. And they are more able to understand how to be prepared so they may not even need assistance. So we want more persons to come on board with this training so that we reach our targets by 2030.
All right, and we thank you so much for that. And while he was speaking, I was seeing Mr. Dukran nodding his head. So we're going to ask him what the training was like, because it's one thing for you to say, Mr. Kishore, that yes, the feedback was nice, but we're going to ask that of Mr. Dukran when we return. Stay with us. We'll come back with more. Welcome back. We are going in depth on the third volunteer training program involving the deaf community and uh, well, deaf and hearing impaired. And the, we're doing so with uh, Stefan Kishore, Crisis Management Coordinator, Trinidad and Tobago Red Cross Society, uh, Jerry David, a Senior Disaster Management Coordinator, Ministry of Rural Development and Local Government, as well as uh, Stephen Dukran, Vice President of the TNT Association for the hearing impaired. And Mr. Dukran, I want to ask you, what was the feedback that you got about this training period? So, I was a part of the search program and I, asked a lot of members from the community what their experience was like. I asked if they thought the content was too hard, if they were afraid, but they said that it was relatively easy to understand. And Mr. Jerry David and Steve and Stephen, Stephon, the both of them, their teaching style, their tech, they was they could understood because they use a lot of activities, they use a lot of visuals. So it was easy for us to visualize and understand the concepts. Honestly, it was a wonderful experience. I mean, I haven't forgotten much from the, the, the program thus far. And I we also stepped in and assisted, assisted the trainers in making it more visual. And, we, and now, if we, if we have programs that are too uh, were the, it, it would be difficult for deaf persons to understand, but changing it in a language in a way that we can understand is how we can benefit. So now we're just showing it's, it's easier when we have more visual ways. So after we, um, after we see what needs to be done, after we can read and we can match, we can hear it and understand the information. All right, thank you so much for that. And I want to ask, how do you feel hearing that feedback uh, from the person himself, Mr. David, as well as asking about the importance of those linkages between the third volunteer program and the disaster risk reduction plan? Okay, now, if you notice that um, although there were uh, auditory impediments, the visual and the kinesthetic um, was very active and they learned very, very quickly and uh, they, they, they learned how to put the per a person, a victim, into the recovery position. You would see them actually uh, doing the techniques for, for, for suppressing a fire. If you had to um, use a blanket to create a stretcher, you would see them um, involved in it, the passion they, they, they carried with it. They carried it over, and uh, that was tremendous. Uh, uh, and I was happy to see that this community and uh, quite a bit of uh, being quite a bit of men, and that's important. Sometimes when we do uh, training for third, we get quite a bit of women, but we got many of the men out there. And this particular, uh, although there were 12, um, more than half of them were men, and we were happy to have them. And uh, your other question, you want to ask that again, uh, DJ? And just before I ask the question, I even, I'm, I'm looking at the visuals there and I'm looking at that splint being made with the cardboard. And that is something that I think children do just off of playing. So it makes sense yes. to be able to bring that in and seeing how functional it can be. But the other question I was asking about, asking you to uh, give us a little extrapolation on those linkages between the CERT volunteer training program and the disaster risk reduction plan. Okay, now... The, 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 the plan for disaster, if you're looking at a comprehensive disaster management plan, and that's what uh, the Ministry of Rural Development and Local Government and the ODPM, uh, we are working now to get that totally completed. Uh, 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 and uh, what we are saying is that 
this particular SIP training program we have had with the DEPT, um, it was, you would not have seen that written into any disaster plan. You, you see, so we have to now, um, you will see CERT volunteers as part of the plan and, and, and the CERT volunteers, how they support the disaster management units, uh, how they support in shelter management, how they support uh, the regional corporations in, in, in all their activities when there is a hazard that impacts the community. But this is the first time, I don't think it has ever been done in any part of the world, because we were looking for literature to see whether there was any training of um, deaf persons. And uh, I, I'm, you say hearing impaired, but I understand they like us to say, they prefer us to say deaf persons. And um, we, we, have, we have to now write this into the plan now. That is training for communities like, like the deaf. And um, when we did training uh, uh, with the, about the blind, we were looking at how we should um, relate to them. That is, we, the responders, how we should relate to the blind in leading them out of uh, a situation uh, in, in, in terms of evacuation. Yeah. So that is a sensitivity training that we have to get into also. And that we may have to write that into that comprehensive uh, disaster management policy framework. We may have to write that into it also. But um, it's a work in progress, and uh, other communities can contact the ministry or the or Stefan at the Red Cross if you would like to, us to do programs like this, where we will teach um, members of any community how they can be better, did they, how, how they can better serve their families and also members of their, their neighbors and the wider uh, ambit of their communities. This is what we're about. And give us that contact information, please. So how, how do people reach out, engage to be, to be part of this process? Uh, well, first, uh, let, let me say, Dikie, that uh, the next third program starts tomorrow. Uh, well, in, uh, well, it starts on the 12th. By Saturday, the 12th and 13th, we have registered already over 425 persons. If, uh, so that we are going to do quite a bit of training virtually. Yes, uh, this program we did with the, uh, with the deaf, we definitely could not have done it virtually. So we had to get hands on and do it. But the program we are starting on the 12th and 13th, and uh, I think it's 17th and 19th, it takes us almost uh, two weekends to complete training. Uh, you can, I'm going to give my number, 789-7776. 789-7776. Stefan can give you the Red Cross number because they are our equal partner in this project. Uh, Stefan? So to reach out to the Red Cross, you can email us at crisis, that's C-R-I-S-I-S, -S, at ttrcs.org. Or you can call us at 627-8215 uh, in order to make contact with us if you're interested. And we want to thank you so much, gentlemen. Definitely just scratching the surface of this very important conversation. Stefan Kishore, Crisis Management Coordinator, Jerry David, Senior Disaster Management Coordinator, and uh, Stephen Dukran, Vice President of the TNT Association for the Hearing Impaired, uh, representing the deaf community, speaking about the third volunteer training program dealing with the deaf community. And on behalf of the entire TTT News team, I'm DK Roster. Thank you so much for joining us.